Tupolev 154B for flight gear. Uh, continuing on, we'll be starting up the instruments and systems and getting things ready for flight. Uh, you should have the engines running already. If not, go back to the engine start video and then come back when you do. Uh, starting off, let's charge the emergency brake system here. Hold this button down until the red light goes out. We're doing this first because until you do, you will have no parking brake. And in flight gear, the aircraft will be free free to just roll away on its own. So you usually want to charge that as soon as you get the engine started. Uh, next, we'll go to the overhead panel and we'll start turning on power for the different instruments and systems. Start with the angle of attack and G-meter. Power for the electrical altimeter. Power for the turn coordinator and standby horizon. Power for the vertical gyro system. Power for the reference vertical gyro and main vertical gyro. Power for the main and reserve gyro compass system. Power for the first and second gyro magnetic heading units of the compass system. Power for the static pressure system. Power for the nav radios. Uh, this is power for the RSBN system, which is like the Russian equivalent of VOR used for navigation and updating the nav computer. We won't be using that for now. Power for the radio altimeters. Power for the communication radios. ADF radios. Power for the Doppler system used for detecting drift and ground speed. Uh, this is the mode switch over water, over land. And the operation mode switch will put up into the Doppler position. Okay, next we are going to align the gyros. So go ahead and go to your sub view and get a good look at the instrument here. First off, we'll need to input our current latitude into the scale here. And you'll see the Cyrillic character S, which looks like C in the English. That represents north. And if you move the scale, you'll see the Cyrillic character U, which looks like IO or 10. And that represents south. So make sure you're on the right one. You can use the mouse wheel to move the scale and a left click will go forward one degree and a middle click will go back one degree. I am currently at Amsterdam Schiphol Airport which is about 52 degrees north. So I'll put it on 50 and give it a couple clicks. After that, put the selector switch to the left and this one to the top. Now press and hold the alignment button here and you will keep that held down until this number stops changing. Okay, and when it's done, we'll put the switch to the bottom and press and hold again. And this time, we're affecting this set of numbers. Okay, and once those two are done, we will put this switch to the middle and then repeat the same procedure. This time we're affecting these two numbers. And then to the bottom just like before and align the last one. Okay, once they're all aligned We'll put this switch to the top, these two switches. These are the mode switches for what is shown on the HSI here. In the top position it will show the gyro heading, which is basically the great circle course. And in the bottom position it will show the gyro magnetic headings, which is basically your magnetic course. But the normal mode of operation would be the upper position. 
Next, we will align our artificial horizon here. Do that by opening the cover here and pressing and holding the button until it levels off. Okay, you'll notice we have a warning light here. We need to reset that now that we've aligned it. Do that in the overhead panel. Just switch up and down and you'll see we've cleared the warning. Next, we will get the automatic flight system working. This is the autopilot, flight director, many other things. Start by flipping the three booster switches up and make sure you've closed the cover. Come to the engineering view. You should have good pressure in all three, no warning lights and engage the actuators for y'all pitch and roll here. And then we'll want to turn on the stability switch here. And then in the overhead panel we can turn on the power for the system. Okay, while we're here we'll Flip this switch up to enable the nose wheel steering modes. This switch you can select between 10 degrees and 63 degrees. 10 degrees is used for takeoff and landing, 63 degrees is used for taxiing. These are your uh, taxi and landing lights. This switch extends or retracts the lights. And bottom position is taxi lights top position is landing lights. Put it in a taxi position. You need to check that your stabilizer lever is in the proper position. You can click on this gauge here, the stabilizer gauge, and get a readout on the bottom of your weight and then center of gravity. Below 28% we want to put the lever in the bottom position. And you can look in the manual for the proper positions and how to use that in more detail. You would check that your altimeters are set properly. And basically now you are ready for taxiing. While taxiing you would normally extend the flaps and when you're lined up on the runway you would put the switch to 10 degrees at which point you'd be ready for takeoff. You'll notice we still have the not ready for takeoff light blinking here because we haven't extended any flaps and we're still in the 63 degree position. If we go ahead and extend some flaps, and we'll pretend we're lined up with the runway, we'll put it in takeoff and put it in 10. You see now the not ready for takeoff light has gone off. The crew has reported they are ready for takeoff. So that's about it for that.